Hey friend, Chris Vandiver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, we're gonna dig into pan laws because pan laws are something that get users very excited. There's a lot of controversy around them. And when a user finally stumbles across the pan law options in Logic and they start to change the different laws, they believe that they're hearing their mix getting wider or narrower. They think that there's like a stereo width change that's going on. So let's unpack pan laws so you know exactly what's going on under the hood of Logic. So you don't have to worry about when these conversations crop up and folks are, you know, contending Cubase has a better pan law or Pro Tools or whatever. First things first, let's just think about what a pan law probably has to do with. There's some sort of adjustment that occurs when we're panning our tracks from the center to the hard right or to the hard left. When we pan our tracks from hard left to hard right and to the center, we don't expect there to be any sort of volume difference, right? You just imagine the same volume, but to the left or to the right or anywhere in between. To demonstrate this, let's take a listen to a drum loop that I have here. I've made sure to adjust the gain of the drum loop so it hits exactly at zero. And I've just put a gain plug in on the stereo output to accommodate for this boost in volume so we're not clipping. Just watch the peak meter tag right here for the peak level as I play this small section of this drum loop. Okay, so it's negative 0.0, .0 meaning it's at zero decibels. Okay. So now what happens if I hard pan this track to the left? Keep watching this peak value. Okay, to the right. And now I'm gonna pan from left to right and just pay attention perceptually, where is the volume of the track? How do you feel the volume of the track is? To my ears, it seems like the track is at the same volume. It's at a consistent volume from left to right, right to left. But yet we know that the hard left and hard right signals are three decibels louder than when we pan the track to the center. What gives? Well, in this case, we need to go to File, Project Settings, down to Audio. And then in the General tab here in the Audio Project Settings, we can see Pan Law, negative 3 dB compensated. Okay, so keep this in mind. When the track is in the center, it's at zero. When it's hard left and hard right, it's three decibels louder, okay? So let's now move on to pan law at zero decibels. And let's just play our loop and then we'll dissect. Okay, it's at zero, as we expect it to be. Let me now hard pan to the right. Keep watching this peak value. Okay, so the hard right is at zero. Presumably the hard left is at zero as well. Okay, so now let's start panning from center to left to the right and back and forth. Just by listening, it sounds like that our drum loop here, as it gets closer to the center, it gets louder. And when we hard pan further to the left and to the right, the volume drops on our track. Now, it's not really possible for the volume to drop, right? Because they're all at the same volume. It's negative 0.0. .0. It's a perceptual thing. But what's going on is, is a perceptual change in volume. Though it's the same volume, when we hard pan, we perceive it as being quieter. So let's hear that again. This goes hand in hand with what I was explaining earlier. We don't really expect the volume to change as we're panning from left to right. We expect a consistent volume and it is a consistent volume, but the problem is, is that the perception is, is that the volume is changing. That's what's going on right now. Okay, so let's now change from a pan law of zero dB to negative three dB. Set this to the center and let's watch the value right here. That's kind of weird. Now we're at negative three. Let's, let's hard pan to the right.
and now we're at negative 0, 0.0, the hard right is at the same volume as if we were at 0 dB for a pan law, but we're at negative 3. Let's now hard pan left to right again. So with the pan law of negative 3 dB, what's happening is, is that when we have the track pan to the center, logic is compensating for this perceptual difference by reducing the volume of our tracks when they're pan to the center by 3 decibels. So this means that they are perceptually equal from left to right. But perhaps you don't want your tracks to be reduced in volume when they're in the center. You want 0 to mean 0 and not 0 to mean negative 3. Well, in that case, we have a pan law of negative 3 dB compensated. This is a different sort of compensation that we first explored at the beginning of the video. Instead of the centrally placed tracks being reduced by negative 3 dB, they're actually left at 0 dB. So 0 means 0. Instead, as our tracks move from the hard left to the hard right, the signal is boosted by three decibels. It sort of makes sense because when a track is straight down the center, we expect zero to mean zero. But as we move a track from left to right, we don't necessarily scrutinize the volume, I would think, as much. So it's a different sort of compensation and one that logic defaults to. So again, let's play this loop. And let's move this to the hard left. to the hard right, and let's pan between. So it's a different type of compensation, and frankly, I think it's fine at the default. I don't need to adjust this at all. I want my track to stay perceptually at the same volume, and at the default pan law of negative 3 dB compensated, our tracks stay at the same perceptual volume. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the volume doesn't change. The volume's changing to compensate, but our perception as we listen to these signals remains consistent. So when a user decides to adjust the pan law and they're listening in the context of a whole mix, they believe that their mix is getting wider or narrower based on the pan law. What's actually happening is the volume is being adjusted across the mix. So any tracks panned are going to experience a change in volume. Any tracks in the center will experience a change in volume. And so it's not really stereo width expanding or contracting. It's just volume changes across your mix. And honestly, changing the pan law is not going to change the way you mix because the pan law might be different, but as you mix and record, you're going to still make the same decisions perceptually. But the pan law changes are not going to change your mix in a way that makes your track wider or narrower. And we can also apply pan law compensation to stereo balancers. So this is a stereo track that I made mono. If I switch it to stereo, apply pan law compensation. Okay, let's play this again. We can see a tiny change moving to stereo. So I'm going to bring this to 0.8. And since a stereo pan knob is actually a balance knob to start with, if I move this to the right, the pan law is applied to the right side and left side of the signal. We're not panning at the moment, we're just deciding how much of the left or right signal we actually want to hear. That perceptual change is not adjusted for the balance knob. So again, pan laws are something that users like to get really excited about and interrogate and, you know, make it a really controversial idea. All a pan law really is, is a compensation of volume of the center versus the hard left, the hard right, and everywhere in between. The default pan law of negative 3 dB compensated exists so that you and I don't perceive a difference in volume as we're panning our track from left to right. That's it. I hope that was helpful for you. As always, if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.